All right, well, uh, then let's uh, take a look at an example two. Okay. Is that about uh, the value of dollars in a business investment in your book? Value of an investment. Value of an investment. Excellent. Yeah. All right, well now again we have two different ways to find percentage change. We could just do f prime over f, or we could take the derivative of the log. Well, in this case, it is going to be convenient to take the log, because this is going to simplify nicely when we take the log of this function. And they, they specify too, right? Oh, and they gave you a clue as right. well. Um, but even if they hadn't given you that clue, you would want to say to yourself, maybe it's going to be simpler to take the logarithmic de uh, derivative. So generally, if it's just one term, you're most likely better off taking the logarithmic derivative? Well, let's see. In many cases, if it's just one term, uh, it's going to be simple enough that it doesn't make much difference. The key, uh, the key is, if taking the logarithm will simplify the function, okay. then uh, oftentimes that's a good way to go. That'll be clear as we go through this problem. So okay. let's take the log. Okay. Now we have to review our algebra for logarithms and ask ourselves what we can do to simplify this. Well, we can simplify this in a number of steps. What is the first simplification that we can make to this logarithm? Um, can't you raise 26 to the root t to the 750,000? Doesn't that go up? Or is that not right? Let's see. I think that's something that we can't do. Uh -oh. No. So um, I think what you were thinking of is the log of x to the y equals y times the log of x. Uh, so I think you were thinking of taking a coefficient and making it into an exponent when you're dealing with a logarithm. Uh, okay. But that rule doesn't work for exponentiation. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so um, that would, what you were discussing would have worked if we were working with logarithms, but it doesn't work for exponentiation. Okay. Uh, you already know that. For example, suppose that you have 2x. Is that the same? As x squared? No. no. You can't just take a coefficient and make it into an exponent. Except in this special case of logarithms. Okay. So there's a different simplification that we can make. Either of you see how we can simplify this? What's the first simplification you could make? Make t to the one half. Do you know how you can simplify this? Or what's a, a way you could rewrite this? The log of a product is the sum of the logs. Right. The log of a product is the sum of the logs. Well, here we have a product. We have this number times this number. So the first simplification we can make here's the first simplification we can make. I'm not even going to bother trying to simplify this yet until I do the, simple, the easiest simplification, which is separating out the product here. So, um, of course, it, at first this might not seem like it's a simplification, but we'll see why it is in a second. So far, we've just rewritten this. So okay. we've used this product of logs. Well, this is about as simple as it can be, but now we can make a simplification uh, of this. You can cross out the L and the B. So what do you have left? So 0.6 root T. That's right. Now, let's be a little bit more careful. Instead of saying, you're, you're right, but instead of saying we're crossing out, let's think about the operations that we're using. Well, the first thing we're going to use is something we already talked about. How would you rewrite this? Y ln x. Yeah. This is the true fact about logs that a second ago we were saying doesn't apply to other situations. Okay. So the first thing we would do here
this basically tells us that we can take this exponent and turn it into a coefficient in front of the log. So we've taken this exponent and turned it into the coefficient in front of the log. Now what is the natural log of e? 1. That's right, so now this term will drop out. Okay. So it's really best to do these each in separate steps, especially because when I, I saw when I was looking at your exam, um, they said something like, uh, you have to give an explanation for every step. No explanation, no credit. Right. Well, this is uh, how we would explain what we're doing here. For each step, we should say, what's the rule that we're using that justifies this in doing that? Uh, also, anyway, if you do it in separate steps, you're less likely to make mistakes. So. This is just one. So it turns out that you were right. In a sense, we've just crossed out the log e. Right. But it's better to think about the operations right. that we're right. doing. Well, these are all facts about logarithms that we need to have flashcards made of and memorize. Your exam is closed book? Yeah. All right, so this is just stuff that we have to have memorized. Well, now we can see that the, taking the logarithm really did simplify things because it got rid of the e. Right. Get, taking the log got rid of the e. Um, so this is simpler than we started with. And if you could have seen that up front, that might have been a hint that taking the log is a good way to go. Well, remember the reason we were doing all of this was so that we could take the derivative of the logarithm. So we have to take the derivative of this function. Well, let's go through that step by step. What can we say about the derivative of this function? 1 over 750,000. Let's try working that out on paper. Go ahead and try write out what it would be on paper, and then we can discuss the steps. Let's go through that step by step, and we'll try to do the same thing that we did here. Instead of jumping to the answer, we'll go one step at a time. So, <clears throat> we're taking the derivative of here's the derivative that we're taking. Well, the first simplification we can make is um, we know that the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. So we can split these out. That was apparent to both of you. The derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives. And then when you were taking this derivative, I think what you were thinking of is, what's the derivative of the logarithm of x with respect to x? It's 1 over x. Now, now here's kind of a trick question. What's the derivative of 5 with respect to 0? Yeah, there you go. So I think both of you thought that for here we were supposed to use this formula. But this is a constant. There's a big difference between the log of a variable and the log of a constant. Oh. So I think you've already seen this, but what's the derivative of 5? Yeah. yeah. The derivative of any constant with respect to any variable is 0. Now, how can you tell which of these two approaches apply here? Well, when you're taking the derivative of the log of a variable with respect to that same variable, that's when you take the reciprocal. But notice that. Um, these two things are not the same. The 750,000 on the top is not the same as what we're taking the derivative with respect to. So that might be one signal that this is not the right approach over yeah. here. Um, or you can just say, this is, not, this is a constant, not a variable. So um, its derivative is zero. Okay. That is one of the ways in which taking the log here was supposed to simplify our life. Because it gave us a great big constant out front that we don't need to worry about anymore. If we had taken the derivative of this, the 750,000 would stay around. Right. Because the it would stay around because it would be part of the product. But by taking the logs, we're able to remove the 750,000 and simplify our life. Okay. So this derivative is going to be zero using this idea rather than this idea. Okay. All right. And then you might have had a little trouble with this as well. Now, I think that you saw the trick was when you're dealing with square roots, it's better to rewrite it 
in terms of an exponent. So the square root of t is t to what exponent? One. Uh -huh. Good. Now, um, you remember that you take down the exponent and multiply it by 0.6. So we get 1 half times 0.6. And now when you take the derivative, um, do you reduce the exponent or increase the exponent? Reduce. Yeah, I think one of you might have increased it. So what's our new exponent? Negative 1 half. Yeah. Good. Well, why would you make that mistake of increasing it? Because now you've learned about integration. Right. And in integration, you increase the exponent. So oftentimes when people learn about integration, they get worse at differentiation yeah. because they get the two ideas confused. So you always have to stop and think. Differentiation means you reduce the exponent. Anti-differentiation is the opposite. So you right. increase the exponent. Right. 